So, I finished reading Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I read it fast, like super fast. And when I closed the book for the last time, I knew that I loved the experience. Why? Because I could see myself in Cat. Could see the sides of writing fanfiction and trying to find your own voice with writing original fiction. Because the relationships were written so well and I could see that nobody was right, nobody was wrong, and that's how you make believable characters. But after I read a couple of two-star reviews of the book, I started to think. The reviews were well constructed and explained and made me think. They didn't make me change my mind about loving the book, but they made me think why somebody would not love it. So I come to go deeper into these reasons, deeper into my reasons to rate the book 4 stars and not at 5 out of 5 stars when I loved it that much, that it's one of my favorites, and what it is like to be a nerd and a fangirl. They said that Gas was nothing like a fangirl and she only thought about her fix and fans and nothing more. That Ravel spread this false image of a socially awkward nerd when nerds aren't really like that. I liked Kat, and I found her frustrating too. I liked her because I was able to see so much myself in her. When I started university something like 7 years ago, I was scared of people I was living with. I shared a kitchen with 7 other people and it made me anxious as hell. I avoided going to the kitchen as much as I could so I didn't have to talk to anyone there. I ate my food at the cafeteria and never prepared anything myself. I had food at my room, I even washed my dishes in my bathroom sink. That's how horrible I was meeting with new people. Despite that I got friends and started dating. It's possible to be, possible to be this horribly awkward person and still learn to come out of your shell and learn to be social. That's what happened to Kath, that's what happened to me. This one person also argued that Cat isn't a good rep representation of a nerd, of a van girl, because she never speaks online about her fandom, never actively watches anything related to her fandom, and I both agree and disagree with this. When I was 19, just out of high school and first time ever out of my childhood home independently and permanently, I was still an active part of all the fandoms I had back then. I wrote fanfiction, I watched AMVs, looked for conversations and learned about new fandoms through my new friends. So, in that regard, Kat is very low-key fangirl. She only writes fanfiction and reads her comments. That's it. No other interaction. interaction. But on the other hand, she seems to have so much more going on in her life that maybe she just doesn't have the time to do that all anymore. And like me, she has trouble with her twin, her father, her new roommate, new boy, other new boy, and then this long ass fanfiction she's written for two years and is now dedicated to finish. At one point I was that fan too. I only wrote. I wasn't active in a fandom otherwise because I already had friends with whom to talk about fandoms. I had already spent all my interests in talking about my fandom with strangers on internet. I was even done with watching YouTube videos about the subject unless I really wanted to know what someone thought about some exit part of book or something. Now at age 26, I am in a stable relationship, going through my last, year of uni last years of university and trying to balance with my mental health, reality and dreams. I have moved on from fanfiction to original fiction writing and it feels like a natural step. I'm not saying it's because I'm t at 26 you can be active at fandoms, you can be 80 and be active in your fandoms, but it's a life situation. I still play games, I read, I write, I watch movies, series, and I love them. I watch YouTube videos about writing and bullet journals, and I'm nerdy about them. So it's not all behind me, but the life situation, experiences, and a long, long break from my fanfics have pushed me forward. What do I want to say with this? Maybe that, that I was actually a little bit sad that Kat hadn't moved on from writing Simon Snow fanfiction. I don't know why. I started to read this book because I wanted to read about another fangirl who writes fanfiction like me. Maybe I was expecting this change because of the way Gat started to learn about writing her own stories and creating her own worlds from her fiction writing profession. It really hit me, her words. I realized at that moment that I had moved from manipulating other people's characters to create my own, and the way Professor Piper talked about it really hit home. 
I wanted to create, so maybe the reason for my disappointment, disappointment is only selfish. Maybe I was surprised that she just didn't finish her two-year huge life project and along with Simon Snow realized that she's grown and she could now move to other fandoms too or to writing her own stories, like me. Her growth didn't seem to go anywhere. Her personal life changed and became better, but she didn't move anywhere with her fandom. It's okay to still stay part of Simon Snow fandom. I still consider myself part of Harry Potter fandom, even though the last fanfiction I wrote was three years ago. It will forever be there, even though I can see other amazing stories and worlds that are there. Maybe it's selfish of me to wish for that kind of change for her too, but for some reason it would have been better ending for me instead of just reading from, from the comments of the author that Cass immediately started her new Simon Bass fanfic. So yeah, I don't know if you can see my points. I don't even know myself anymore. What the point is, really. But to the next part, shall we? What I didn't like myself, what I noticed right away not liking, were surprisingly the parts where she read her fanfiction. The parts between chapters weren't that bad, but still surprisingly boring for me. I loved Trevor's writing style at the part where she told Cat's story, but for some reason I found parts where we read Cat's fanfiction quite dull and generic. I should be ashamed of this comment, but to be honest, I've read so much better Harry Draco, fan Draco fanfiction than what she wrote, and it was said to be super popular on fanfics.net. I need to be honest, it was average writing at best. Okay, shame on me. I'm a horrible person. I feel like I'm criticizing an actual fanfiction writer, but really I'm actually criticizing a published author who writes about a character who writes fanfiction, but it's actually this published author that has written the fanfiction. Right, but more often than not I found myself skipping this part. I didn't even read the parts of Simon's notebooks at the end because they didn't interest me at all. Which is kind of scary because I already have Carry On on my shelf and now I have no interest to read it. Maybe I let this lay low for a while and try to read Carry On during summer. But honestly, I like her contemporary. I might try, it out, try out Eleanor and Park before Carry On. But despite me being whiny about these parts, I loved Fangirl. It was a good story about growth, relationships, and even fangirling. As a huge fanfiction writer, I say you can still be a fangirl even if you concentrate all your nerdy energy into writing your stories about your favorite couple and nothing else. I kind of wish there would have been some kind of mental solution for Kath about her mother though. Now it feels like there were kind of many things that were left unsolved without it being still a satisfying open ending. I was actually a little bit confused that these were the final words for this story, the words of last Simon's notebook. Not even her fanfictions end, but Simon Snow. I love the story and it should have deserved something more memorable. I can't even remember what Kat was doing in the final scene, despite me finishing the book only a couple of hours earlier before writing this review. Fangirl had it's good and bad, but it had more good and it made me cry out or feel impressed more than many other books have. That's why it's still a good 4 out of 5 star read for me and will be forever one of my favorite books.